Hey, it's 104.3 My FM. We're here at the iHeartRadio Los Angeles building. I just want to thank you guys for coming out today. Who's excited to hear some live music? Well, my name is John Camucci. You can hear me on Valentine in the morning. Valentine, my dad's out here somewhere. But uh, we're joined by a very special guest today. I'm so excited for you to meet him. It is someone that I've been very excited to meet. Please put some hands together for Candy Crow. Hello. So I know you're going to play some songs here for us in a minute here. Yes. Uh, but I just want to start by saying, man, Kian, Kian is a dope name. Thank you. <laughs> do you get that a lot? Uh, no, I mostly get like, what, how do you pronounce your name? I was going to say, you probably get the most mispronunciations. What's the most common way that people pronounce your name? Uh, Cian or Cian or, or Kian. Kian. There's people who have known me for like two years who still call me Kian. Really? Instead of Kian. And, and I Kian just, is the right way, right? Kian's the right way, yeah. And that's Irish? Yeah, Irish. I Very love Irish. That. Well, I want to talk to you about I'll Be Waiting, because that is the biggest song. It's the song that introduced me to your music. It is all over TikTok. I actually was just checking the numbers this morning. You have two videos on your TikTok right now with just under 100 million views. Yeah. That is like a wild number yeah. to even say out loud. When you're looking at 100 million views, what are you thinking in your mind? Uh, it's fake. That's what all I think. I was like, no way. You know, I think it's only like it only sinks in when I'm in the middle of nowhere or I'm like somewhere so random that I've never been before. And people are like stopping me in the streets being like, oh, I love your music, love your videos. Then I'm like, oh, I guess it was like a hundred million views multiple times. Yeah. So I guess like there are some real people who saw that, right. which is mad. Like I was, I was thinking about like friends I know in real life and then it's hard to process that number, a hundred million. So I literally had to look this up here in Los Angeles. We have four million people. Okay, oh, wow. if, if you take all of Southern California, you got 39 million people. You're at 100 million views for one video, and you have multiple of those. Yeah. That's like really intense to put that perspective in there. It's actually, it's actually beyond, uh, I think because it's so insane that you can't like gauge it. I think I remember like getting a few hundred thousand views and thinking that was madness. And then getting like, you know, a million or two million views and being like, whoa like that's viral like this is it i can imagine so like if but like i don't, well i don't even know what a hundred million views and then like i think we i think in all those videos i think it's almost i think it's near a billion or like close enough and i'm just like i don't know like what does that mean i don't know what that means I so don't know. when you're doing this for the first time and in the video you are in a public place and you start singing the song and and out of nowhere, in a public place unexpectedly, everyone's kind of looking at you, like, why are you singing? And then this choir comes in, and it's like a flash mob, but you have a choir, and everyone's singing instead. Do you remember the first time you did it? Yeah, so it was pretty, it was, I mean, it was recent enough. It was probably only a couple of months ago that it, like, I started doing it. Um, and I think, like, I, as, a, as like, a teenager with, like, my friends and stuff, I always just wanted to make stupid videos that, like... <laughs> just like pranks and like you know as a teenager i don't know but like my friends we would just like watch random pranks on youtube and be like oh we should do that and like do some dumb stuff so like i kind of just like one day was like with my best friend who like makes all my content with me um and we were just like sitting in my apartment and i was like and i just kind of had like a moment where i was like oh, what if like i was in a cafe sing and i just started singing and everyone was like, who's this guy? Like, shut up. Um, which is like my favorite thing. I love like making people like make assumptions or like, or, or just annoying people, but like in a way that you're not really being annoying, but people are kind of like, why is this weird guy singing? And then like bringing a choir in and then people are like, oh, what is going on? Um, so for me, it was more like a prank. And then people started being like, oh, it's like a flash mob. And I'm like, I guess it's kind of a flash mob. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to like kind of prank people. And then it just worked out. So your very first time, were you nervous at all? Because you were saying you're thinking that people are probably out there like, who is this guy? Please stop singing. Like, do you think that your first time going out singing in a public place? Yeah. So, the, well, actually, funnily enough, the first time we did it, we didn't really know what we were doing. And we were just walking around Manchester in the UK with like a choir that we, I had like just met. Um, and I, the f I had multiple ideas of how I was going to try. First, I was going to walk up to someone. Then I was going to just like sing for someone. I was gonna, all these different approaches, and we were going to see what was going to work. And 
stupidly enough, we thought that the best thing to do first was going to be to ask somebody if I can sing for them. And obviously, we didn't think it through <laughs> that if you walk up to a stranger in like a train station, they're just going to be like, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> so like I walked up to loads of like, honestly, this is like the most humbling experience of my life. And I walked up to so many people and I was just like, hey, like, and I'm trying to like make myself sound like not a psycho. And I'm like, hey, like, can I just like have 20 seconds of your time to sing you a song? And they're like, some people are like, no, sorry, we're rushing. But like, some people are appalled. They're like, no, like, they're like, no time for you. It's hilarious. And uh, so that was like the, the first moment and the first day we were at filming. So like after like seven no's and like an entire choir, like watching me embarrass myself, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna sing to someone without their permission. Like, let's just go to a cafe and walk up to someone um, and start singing. And, uh, and yeah, but it, it is like, I get like, obviously a bit nervous when I do it, but I just get such a, like, a kick out of the, th like, the experience because it's just hilarious to watch people be like, what is going on? Especially the first time that we went out and filmed because there was those videos weren't posted so no one had seen me do it before so like sometimes it, now it's a bit like harder like we went to Paris and people will like see me get out of a car and they'll be like oh, let's follow him he's gonna do something you know um but the first time it was really like I mean I still love it because you can still get away with like pretty much 90% of the people having no idea what's about to happen um but yeah, I kind of thrive off just like embarrassing myself. So it's, yeah, it's is, it, is it more nerve wracking those first couple of times or now that those videos have gone so viral, living up to that expectation of having to keep doing more of those? Like what's more nerve wracking? I don't know. I think like I try to like not put any like pressure on myself because I think like all, most of it is out of my control. Like I can just do my best and like make like... Uh, you know, obviously in, in music industry now, like you just have to make your own content to promote your music. So I just like do the best that I can and I kind of just let go then. I'm just like, just gonna do what's fun, do the best that I can and not be like, oh, it has to get a hundred million views or whatever. Um, and I think that's like nice, but I think when I go out and make the videos, like I definitely, there are certain situations where if there's like risk involved in the reaction, or like if there's like security or there's like something, I get nervous in the way that I'm like, I hope I can, we can fin, like I hope I can get the whole song out. Or like I hope I can, I hope it's not gonna get disturbed in the middle and someone be like, sorry, you have to stop. And then it's like super awkward for everyone watching. And I'm like, okay. And like, I have had hilariously awkward ones, but like, you just kind of like, you got to laugh it off. I got to know where the idea for the choir came from. Cause I feel like it brings so much more power to the entire thing. Like yeah. why the choir? So I wrote, I'll be waiting. And then I was going to record a choir on it, um, on the official recording. And then somebody told me how much that would cost. And I was like, no way. Obviously, I'm just going to go pretend to be a choir. And I got like two of my friends and we just st went to a studio and just recorded like ourselves like a hundred times to sound like a choir. Um, and then there was like the idea of doing um, like the record label. We're like, oh, we would love to do acoustic versions with like a real choir because like it's like a, you know, a fake choir on the song, but it's meant to sound like choir. And so we were going to go and just film these like you know, big scale YouTube videos, like the whole song in a really beautiful setting. And so it was when I heard that we were going to do that, that I was like, oh, so like we have a choir. And when I knew that we had a choir for a day, I was like, well, obviously I'm just going to go take the choir into a cafe. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and that's basically like where it came from. Once I kind of knew that there was like, that we had the ability to have a choir to go around and like ha be able to do that. I was like, I want to do something like way more extreme than just like a, a nice acoustic version with a choir. Like I want to just go and like surprise people. So And it feels extreme. I mean, we've all seen the idea of flash mobs, right? People dancing out in public in the same kind of fashion. But I think, I think there's something about music that's different, right? It's like why you do what you do. It's why everyone here is here, just to be honest. And I feel like music in some way just has a, a better effect, a more powerful effect on bringing people together. What do you think the reason is that so many people have gravitated towards this? Like, do you think it's just music in general? Um, that's a really big question. Um, I think people just gravitate towards whatever makes them feel something, like emotionally. I think music makes you feel 
it can be like so many things. It can make you feel like uh, happy, ecstatic. Like it can make you feel emotions that you've been like holding in for so long. It can just make you, I mean, the power of music is insane. Like you watch a movie without music. It's like, it doesn't, you can't get those same emotions. It really brings like something about it because it's untouchable. Like I think we overlook actually how kind of magical it is. Something that like doesn't really like, exist in many ways but you you can hear it it's so weird um but i think because of that it it allows people to process emotions allows people to get like um really like moved by like whatever the the music is about or, or how it impacts them and what part of their life it like relates to them from and i think like because it's so personal like that and because i guess like the music that i make is so personal people kind of feel that i guess but like I don't know. It's all... Who knows? Well, I'm know. excited to hear some of that right now. Who's ready to hear some music? <laughs> all right. Let's go. Ken, I'm going to let you play some songs, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Cool. Leave your keys if you're not coming home. You packed your bags full of letting go. You're moving in, now you're moving on. There's no getting used to being gone You were down, now you're giving up It's to fall start if you're quitting on us Another year, just another life I wish you call so I could say goodbye let you know I'll wait for you every night If you ever want to fall in love If you ever want to bet on us If you ever want to be my one I'll be waiting If you ever want one more night If you ever want to make things right If you ever want to change your mind That you'd be giving up Guess with all the climbing You're tired and you fell Out of love Maybe if you don't crash the landing You'll end up right back where I'm standing and Then you'll know I'll wait for you every night if you ever want to fall in love If you ever want to bet it on us If you ever want to be my one I'll be waiting If you ever want one more night If you ever want to make things right If you ever want to change your mind I'll be waiting If you ever want to fall in if you ever want to bet on us, if you ever want to be my one, I'll be waiting. If you ever want one more night, if you ever want to make things right, if you ever want to change your mind, I'll be waiting. Uh, so this next song is my most recent single um, it's called Part of Me a song that I wrote for my best friend who really sadly took his life a couple of years ago um, and we used to like kind of play around the country in Ireland and busk together loads so he was like a really amazing musician um, I like to say like it's probably the most important song I feel like I've ever written because if it can like help one person it's kind of all that I can hope for um, but definitely the song that I wish I had to write the least um, 
but yeah, so it's, this is uh, this is part of me. They say the devil takes the best of us. I guess I always knew you weren't like the rest of us You held a party in your hands like it would slip away like moments pass How I miss the way you used to laugh Is that the way it goes, you trade your soul to be your rose Give everything you've got to give before you've got to go I guess that no one knows I guess that I just didn't see the lows Oh, we all fall down I wish you'd told me how you felt that night Now I'll never get to change your mind With all of the memories You'll always be part of me I'll tell your mother how we used to laugh But it's never gonna bring you back Now you're only a memory But you'll always be part of me Part of me I remember times when we'd stay out till morning light I remember how you'd say how much you missed those nights And I wish that I had noticed all the cracks in your smile Guess it took a while We could have put stars together, planted roots and lived forever We could have been kings of our own kingdom had you let me help you But your condition to believe it only makes you weaker Till it chokes you and you're barely breathing Oh, we all fall down I wish you told me how you felt at night Now I'll never get to change your mind With all the memories You'll always be part of me I'll tell your mother how we used to laugh But it's never gonna bring you back Now you're only a memory But you'll always be part of me To change your mind with all of the memories, you'll always be part of me. But tell your mother how we used to laugh, but it's never gonna bring you back. Now you're only a memory, but you'll always be part of me. started playing I'll Be Waiting, I was checking around corners. I was like, if there's a choir that comes out here, I swear to God, I'm going to be prepared for this. I always have to like apologize. Sometimes I apologize like mid-show because I know everyone's like... Yeah, we expect it now, you Sometimes know? Sometimes I'm like, it's not happening, not today. So I, I wanted to ask you, you recently posted about your album and you had this quote, you said, to begin to understand your upcoming album, you need to know about my life. And I kind of want to know what you meant by that. Oh, let's unpack. Yeah. Bring it, let's go. Um, Unpack it. I think like a huge part of, I mean, the album is definitely like just as authentically me and like raw and real as, as I could possibly make it. Um, there's no word in the album that's a lie or made up. Um, and as surprising as that might sound, it's not 
actually that common that people don't just make things up in their songs. Um, I think for a really long time in my life, like I always just wanted to be an artist because I went through so much as a child and as a teenager and as a young kid and whatever um, that I feel like I just really wanted to tell my story and I really wanted to... I think I was lucky that I came out the other side and like made it out like okay and um, had a dream and something that I really wanted to achieve. Maybe coming from a situation and a place and a background that not maybe necessarily a lot of people would feel like they can achieve their goals or whatever. Um, I think the most important thing in the world is like helping other people. And I think that's why we're here. And I think if you've been through something and you've made it out or you've turned it into something good, um, I think it's so important to like help those in that same situation or like give hope to people who are who are going through similar things and like I think as a kid like and as a teenager I found so much like peace and um answers through music that I was listening to um the real stuff stuff that was telling stories stuff that was like just making me feel like I wasn't alone and making me feel like I could do whatever I wanted it doesn't matter how you know, what my life is like right now or what it was like. Um, and I think that's, like, really important for me and I think it's really important for people that listen to the album. They will listen to the album and I'm sure from the album itself they'll learn a lot about me. Um, but I think I wanted people to know kind of a little bit more in advance, like, what the album is and what it means to me and what, it's, what I wanted to do and why I made it and why I wanted to make an album in the first place and why I wanted to be an artist in the first place and what I think it means to be an artist and like what the importance of sharing music is. Like it's not about making music and getting famous and being a celebrity. Like I think so many people are doing it for that reason. Like, and I just, it's never been about that for me. It's always just been because when I was a kid, it was really hard and music is what saved me. And I think if I can tell my story and there's somebody who's going through that right now and I've already had it, you know, I have so many people like come up to me after shows or stuff and it like, it breaks my heart because they're like, I'm going through what you went through and I'm like, I know what that's like and I know exactly, I, I, you know, I'll never forget that and I'll never forget those times in my life. Um, and if there's one thing that I can do is help people get through those times and know that like, it does not define you, like, whatever it is, whatever struggles you have, whatever it is you're experiencing, however hard it is. Um, I think a lot of people, like, it's hard to push past that. It's hard to see yourself as any more than the kid who was, like, abused or whose dad didn't love him or the whatever it is, you know? Like, and some people get stuck there and they get so impacted by that. And I was lucky that I had, like, an amazing mom who, like, really took care of me and my brother and did everything for us and, you know, got us everything that we needed and, and sort of sacrificed everything so that she could give us the life that she wanted for us. And I think, like, the way I can only pay back is to pay it forward to other people. Um, so that's like, that's what it, it means to me. And that's what this like, yeah, I guess that's what I meant. <laughs> no, that's literally exactly what I was asking. I feel like the importance of having a strong mom just really impacts that. That's something that I had too. Luckily, I had a strong mom to deal with those kinds of times. And I feel like when you're growing up and you're looking for an outlet to deal with those kinds of emotions and those struggles, there can be worse things to turn to, but it's so impactful when you do turn to music. And that's the thing yeah. that brings you through it. Yeah, I think it's, I still like to this day, and like I've dealt with like, I feel like I've dealt with everything pretty well and pretty early on in my life. But like to this day, I watch like interviews of, of actors or musicians or people who like that I would have never known they had gone through the same thing. And I watch an interview and it absolutely like, you know, it like destroys me, but in like a really good way, you yeah. know, it makes me feel things, makes me feel more understood, makes me understand more about myself. Um, and like, you can never underestimate the power of like talking about your story and being honest. It's this weird thing, right? When you hear artists who have gone through terrible, tragic things and then they come up with music and you're like, 
yes, like I love this song. You know what I mean? But it's like, I'm sorry you had to go through that, but it, in some way, the fact that you turned it into something to help other people feel less yeah. alone just feels so important. And I know your upcoming album is called Victory. Is that the reason it's called Victory? Because that's kind of the way you got out of that? Yeah, I think so. I think for me, like, the reason I call it Victory is for a lot of different things. There's obviously, like, the victory of having made it out and gotten here doing something that I love so much. Um, but it's also for, like, the victory of, like, love can win and, like, uh, family and friends and, like, all the people who are there for us in the times that we needed it the most. You know, it's a victory for them. It's victory for just, like... It's not even about, like, me and the album. It's, like, it's almost like a reminder to everyone else, including myself, that, like... It's, it's important to like celebrate things and like successes and moments that like you've always dreamt of and whether it's like tiny victories or massive victories or whether it's just like not letting the stuff that happened in your past affect who you are today or turning something so negative into something so positive like it's a victory so I think like it just for me it made so much sense to, to make that the name. I do love that and I feel like it's going to resonate so well. Your tour is sold out. Is it the entire tour? Is it most shows? Um, I mean, it depends because we're on a sold out tour right now. Right. We also have put on sale a few days ago another tour, which is pretty much sold out as well. I also saw this cool thing you were doing that the VIP upgrades on your tour are not for sale for a higher price. To what I understand, it, it's somewhat random so you can give people that experience no matter what kind of financial background you're from. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, like, for me, it's kind of a given. Like, I don't, I, <laughs> I could never charge somebody like, I, I would never feel comfortable that someone who has more money can just pay to, like, meet me. Like, the first, it just doesn't make sense. I'm like, well, that's super narcissistic, first of all. <laughs> but also, like, it's just not fair because, like, I never... I, man, I've, like, I've never been to a festival, like, in my life. I've probably gone to, like, three concerts. The only concerts, most of the concerts I've gone to, bar maybe, like, two, are ones that I just was able to go to for free because I didn't grow up with any means to, to do that. Like, you know, and it's like, if there was any money, like, it, in my family, like, it was not to go to a festival or, you know, that, that stuff was so precious and... and so, like, I don't want someone, yeah, to be able to just, like, pay their way to get something that somebody else can't get because I don't think that's fair. So, I think, I mean, some people might be annoyed and be like, I'd rather just pay it so I can definitely meet you. Right. But I just wanted it to be, like, fair for everybody that, like, doesn't matter who you are, what ticket you have, like, how much money you have. Like, everyone is, should be in a fair um, draw. And, and, like, to be honest, I think the VIP thing's kind of weird anyway, but I know that, like the people coming to shows like they want it. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing it because I'm like, ooh, it's so VIP to meet me. I'm like, why do you want to meet me? That's so dumb. But like, <laughs> but some people do. And like, for some people, that's really special, I guess, because my music means a lot to them and I need to respect that. And, and I, I love meeting my fans. Like, I think it's, for me, it's almost like VIP for me. Like, I get, I get to meet them in a nice environment. And like, and I think I don't want, yeah, I just want it to be like a fair opportunity for everyone. And it's more exciting because every time it, it'll be different people as well, you know? It's not the same people every time who are going to be able to come back and buy their way in. And, and I think, um, you know, I didn't grow up with a lot and I want everyone who's in a similar position just to, to feel, you know, like as heard and as included as possible. I love that, man. You seem like such a good dude. And I'm glad we got to meet you too. I understand you got Thank another you. song for us. Yeah, absolutely. You want to hear one more? Yeah. All right, man, I'll get out of your no way. way. Thank you. This next song is a song called All For You. It is probably the <clears throat> first song that anyone... First song that I put out that anyone like really cared about. <laughs> so hopefully you like it. Roll over, but it's empty. To lay here beside me, I swallow my pride, cause it's all on me. Is it too late? Forgive me. Did you mean what you said? Are you angry? Lost more than a friend, now I'm on my knees. I don't know why 
I'm praying tonight But if you can hear me Tell me if you hear me And I should have called And I should have tried And I should have walked you Home every night And I should have kissed you Ten thousand times Just to tell you what you love you I should have done it all Oh, 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 oh for you, baby But now I'm just a little too late To be what you needed But I hope that he is You took me around But we got nowhere Cause you were naive while I was too scared So when we lit a fire You ran towards the flares And I stood around And I watched you burn Then I rose up to claim you And left you in the dirt Get my hands to myself Like I kept my word Fool you once and never twice I guess you've learned And I don't know why I'm praying tonight But if you can hear me Tell me if you hear me And I should have called And I should have tried And I should have walked you Home every night And I should have kissed you Ten thousand times Just to tell you I love you I should have done it all Oh, 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 oh for you, baby But now I'm just a little too late To be what you needed But I hope that he is I should have promised that I'd never fall But you saw the writing all over the walls I try not to cry The places we'd go to But you know I still care for you I hope that he calls I hope that he tries I hope that he walks you home every night I hope that he kisses you ten thousand times just to tell you he loves